And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Demir Affinity Forge, one of my favorite decks to play that we're bringing back to Standard today. I think the, like, the main reason why I wanted to play this deck again is, hey, After Wizard, thanks for resubbing there. Hey, J-Jack. And hey, what's up, Storm? Um... Oh yeah, so the reason why I really wanted to bring this back is because I wanted to play some Karn the Great Creator decks today. Uh, we're playing two. We're playing this one, and then we're also playing the Mono Green Midrange is a Karn the Great Creator deck also that we'll play later on. Let me kind of update this sub-goal here. Um, because of all these Witches Ovens around these days, you know, there's a lot of Witches Oven, a lot of food decks, so therefore a lot of artifacts that are trying to be activated, and Karn can shut that down. And not only can Karn shut that down, but Karn can go grab Spyglass to shut down other things. Whatever else you want to shut down. So yeah, I've, I've updated the deck. The last time we played this version of the deck, um, actually Field of the Dead was still legal. The last time we played this exact version in Standard. We played, we played uh, after Field of the Dead got banned, we updated it with Oko, because Oko is just incredible. We turned it into Sultai with Oko. Um, we've tried it in Historic. It looked awesome in Historic with Mindstone. Uh, but still historic, they, there were still Oko around, and Oko was, you know, turning all of our artifacts into 3-3s three and stuff like that, and it was kind of rough. But Oko is banned in Standard. It's now banned in Historic, so we're really going to have to check this deck out again in Historic. But, um, yeah, even in Standard, there are there is more artifact and enchantment destruction around. Obviously, the enchantment destruction doesn't matter, but there is more artifact destruction around, which is a little annoying. It's basically... It's basically good at destroying my Mystic Forge. That's what the Artifact Destruction is good at, against. Because, you know, these just died a regular creature removal. And I don't really care about the eggs or the Guild Globes getting destroyed, of course. And this dies a regular creature removal, too. But still, this deck's a whole lot of fun. And so let's let's bring it back. So basically what this deck's all about is casting free spells. And that's what Gar said. Time for some free spells. Um, we're, we're just about... Uh, Having these 16 cards, Serpent, Overseer, Egg, and Globe, these four are all artifacts that cost two or less. You know, you can just play this for two mana. And if you have an so if you have an Ugin in play with your colorless spells costing two less to cast, they're all free. So we're trying to get Ugin in play to make all this stuff free. We want Mystic Forge so we can cast the top card of our library if it's an artifact or a colorless non-land card. And so we can just cast all this stuff off the top of our library for free if we have like that combination there. If we have a Tezzeret in play also, then our creature and our Planeswalker spells have affinity for artifacts. So that means, um, well, you can just read it right there, affinity for artifacts, the huge black box in the middle of the screen. But basically, um, all of our creatures and Planeswalkers will cost one color or one generic less for each artifact we control. So that means we can play stuff like Karn for free if we have four, um, if we have four artifacts. Golos is free if we have five artifacts. Ugin is free if we have six artifacts. Stone Coral Serpent can be, f like, if we have 10 artifacts, we can just play this for 10 for free with Tezzeret. So, yeah, we get to play a bunch of free spells. Um, obviously, these things help us hit our land drops early on and help us cy cycle through our deck, help us hit our land drops. Emery can uh, recast these things as well. Uh, mana base is completely updated. It's still, uh, still kind of a wild mana base, <clears throat> but we're basically an all colorless deck. We have this one double blue card with Sahili, and then a couple double blacks. And our sideboard has a good amount of black in it. So black's a little bit more important. But we got Interplanar Beacons that helped us play the Sahilis. Um, as far as black sources, you can see we have 10 right here, plus the four Fable Passage. So we have 14. <clears throat> That's not really enough to reliably cast double black on turn four all the time. But of course, we were playing Guilt guild globes and golden eggs so like we can use these to cycle through um if we need more black mana but we could just play some cool utility lands like i said the, the beacons help us stay alive we can have a karns bastion that can help out our steel overseers that are putting counters on stuff um mobilized district can do some attacking and blocking we can use cryptic caves as like a horizon canopy later on in the game to just uh clear off the top of our library uh draw an extra card obviously blast zone destroys witches ovens pretty well and, of course, all those utility lands, we can kind of find them with Golos. 
that helps ramp, ramp them. New card in the sideboard. I'm going to try a corridor monitor for the aggro matchup. It's just a two mana one four. That's not that's not that good. But it's it's an artifact, and having more artifacts is is always good. It's like this is a, a good block. Like basically, this is a serviceable card against aggro to just play play some defense for us. Um, but it's also just a card that having having just a wide variety of cards in your sideboard that Karn the Great Creator can grab is certainly useful. Like maybe there's a turn that we have two extra mana and we just really want a one four blocker. Boom, just go grab a corridor monitor. Um, obviously, it ca we can do some kind of crazy stuff with Steel Overseer with it, um, if that ever comes up. But yeah, so we just kind of have a, a just, you know, looking through the artifacts and we have a corridor monitor over there um, to go along with all of these other wonderful cards to go grab at different points. All right, hopefully that's enough about the deck. Let's get going. Let's play some matches. We're going to play the deck over in Ranked today. Basically, because this deck is very slow. Same with the five color Niv We have a couple of pretty slow decks. And even though it would be fun to play a league, um, we may not have time to play a whole league because <laughs> four matches could take two hours. Okay, let's get going. Yeah, this is definitely a deck that I um, that I need to play more i agree this is a this is a really fun deck to play uh i did not play the after hours event i um you know it, it started after i got done streaming last night uh, i i didn't really see it till today and i was kind of busy putting the decks together today updating decks and and spent a good good amount of time on them And so no, I didn't, I didn't end up playing that. I don't know how long it's going to be around for. All right, so Jund. Jund at sacrifice, no surprise. The real thing is if I just play a Stone Coil Serpent out here right now, just to have a 2-2 in play. I think so. It's not great, but we're going to be using our mana anyway. Good card. Help us hit a land drop. There we go. And now Emery only costs one mana. That's pretty good. So I can just cast like the Mystic Forge from my uh, graveyard and not really have to play the ones in my hand. That could be something I could do next turn. Looks like my opponent is just kind of stuck on their two mana, not having black. I could also just blow up Blast Zone and destroy these Witch's Ovens. Nah. Hey, Paul. Rawr, rawr, rawr. It's the new Ashiok sleeves. Okay. I like my main deck against this this deck. Or at least I haven't I haven't seen any reason to not like my main deck against this deck so far. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Paul. Paul says that his son was born yesterday. Congratulations, Paul. 
10 pounds, 15 ounces. Big ol' baby boy. <laughs> Congrats. All right, hopefully my opponent has a little bit more um, useful of a hand. Um, a hand that works a little bit better, but not too well. Not not too well. You don't need to run me out of the gym here. These sleeves are pretty sweet. Oh, those of y'all on YouTube, uh, I changed the... Uh, frames per second. I moved up the frames per second and the bit rate. I'm not sure if it makes any difference to y'all on YouTube from yesterday. If so, let me know. And y'all in Twitch chat, of course, also let me know as well. So to try and get to Ugin. So I, w I like playing the Chromatic Lantern here instead of the Golden Egg because this, of course, helps us get to Ugin. But then once we play Ugin, the egg is free. It's kind of unnecessary. I guess I could lead with Mystic Forge. If I play Mystic Forge, they probably destroy Mystic Forge and not Chromatic Lantern. Let's do that. That's fine. Okay, so I do not have a land here. Steel Overseer. Steel Overseer is like a good card because I can I can throw it down with Ugin. You know, I can just throw down a bunch of Steel Overseers. But I, I prefer a land drop. All right, Golos isn't bad. That's a land drop. This is standard. We're playing standard. And that's why I wanted a land drop. Because Ugin could kill Corvold. So we're going to have to play this to get a land drop. Um, so I can grab an interplanar beacon, and then I gain an extra life with the Ugin. I could grab a Fable Passage that also just takes a land out of the deck, so whenever I Mystic Forge, we have less lands. i grab the beacon. Well, that's me taking 10 damage here. I'm glad they didn't, you know. Uh, yeah, Corvold's definitely the scariest thing. Hey, what's up, good brother? Hey, man. Happy to have you here. Thank you so much for that sub. Entire year, you're amazing. Hope work's going good and everything. Okay, so we're going to play Ugin, gain two. Just 
destroy this Corvold we have to kill. And just hope that this works. Hope we get to block, basically. So I think we have a pretty good chance if we get to untap. Here. Darn. Alright, so it looks like playing the... I think my one mistake there was the Mystic Forge turn. I used the Mystic Forge to kind of bait the Brontodon, but I think I think that was too greedy and I needed just to play Ritual of Sit. Um, Corvold is a problem. We could play some Noxious Grasp, I guess, for some Corvold. That is a scary card. We have Stone Coil Serpent, though. has Reach and Trample. Or, you know, reach and protection. Not trample doesn't matter, but the reach and protection from multicolor. But it can die. I'll take out one Emery for a grasp. You got to steal Bolus of Citadel with Dak Faded in Holiday Cube last night. That is awesome. That's that's pretty sweet there. Alright, so Sahili triggers on non-creature spells. Unfortunately, we have creatures to pair with Sahili. For now. For now. Yeah, I think there is a little bit of statics for something with the mic. Some setting. I couldn't quite figure it out yet. People were saying that yesterday, too. I have to work on that some more here. Yeah, we're playing standard. Yep, yep, yep. I guess my opponent doesn't have anything. Because they said good game and then didn't play anything on turn three. I think I'm just going to leave the... No. Well, we'll just play this first. I think I'll just leave the Blast Zone on one. Could have upped it, upped it of course. Well, I do have lethal in play now with 10 power. Rawr, 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 rawr. And I'm not fetching with the Fable Passage. I want to draw land. We did not, but... I guess I'm supposed to just attack for 10. Even though, instinctively, I really wanted to activate that Steel Overseer. I really did. Well, my opponent played two games that that they didn't do stuff. But we get a win.
It was a quick win too, only 20 minutes, including probably the four minutes or whatever I, I spent talking at the beginning of the video. Uh, sub battle day is going to be the last day of the month, or last Saturday of the month. So in 15 days on the 28th, we got sub battle Saturday. We actually adjusted one last Saturday um, because I was out of town for the, the previous one. So we actually made up for it. So last Saturday, we just did a sub battle Saturday. We're real close to a 12-hour stream. All we got to do is hit this sub goal today. And then we're going to be doing a 12-hour stream here real soon. We're, we're one sub goal away. I don't like just two lands. I think we're going to mulligan this. All right, I like this better. Um, I kind of want to keep all of these, though. Like, I want to keep my four lands to make sure that we can play both of these. Uh... It is nice how Interplanar Beacon by itself can cast Sahili. And honestly, maybe I should just be playing four Interplanar Beacons. I could put back the Serpent, but the Serpent's like a good blocker, like a good turn three. You know, good turn three, make a three three. Pro multicolor. Like, it's a pretty decent creature. And then turn four, start doing these. I mean, I guess I could put back the land and just hope we draw a land. Hmm. Yeah, the reason why I'm I'm down to 24 lands with this deck instead of more is because we have all we have the eight cyclers, the eight two mana cyclers. Those really help us hit land drops. Uh, let's go risky. Yes, yeah, so we have the eight cyclers that help us at land drops. Of course, we have the chromatic lantern, and then we have the goluses. You know, we have the two golus in the main deck. We have the Karn that can go grab golos as well. So the th so the the goluses, you know, help you get that extra land to get to six. Well, now I wish I would have put the serpent down to the bottom and kept that fourth land. Ugh. Really getting punished for not keeping the fourth land. Two twos aren't very valuable in a Bone Crusher Giant format, where there's Bone Crusher Giants everywhere. So we want to go three three. What happened in the first game? But yeah, our, our opponent didn't do a whole lot game one or three. Yeah, yeah, you have to do the Ashiok pre-order. If you do, if you do the Ashiok pre-order, you get the sleeve. Cool Choco. So yeah, yeah. If you're if you like playing historic, historic brawl, add Choco there. Choco wants to be doing some historic brawls. <sighs> okay, so Teamer Adventure. What would I want to grab with Karn against Teamer Adventure? And Spyglass. I mean, we may just want to grab Golos, honestly. Let's just go grab Golos. God Pharaoh's statue is probably pretty awesome in this matchup, though. They try playing just a whole bunch of spells, making all their spells cost more. Not every tale ends in glory. Cast out of Garenbrig for his crimes. Enor. Enor? I guess Enor. Enor. Turn to Fey magic. Oh, turn to Fey magic to fashion the perfect weapon for his revenge. Wait. 
So this dude's in the wrong because he's like committing a bunch of crimes. And now he needs revenge because people don't like that he was committing a bunch of crimes. What's the deal with that? Um. So the problem with getting Spyglass here is I don't have a very good turn like besides casting Spyglass. I don't get to do a whole lot else. I just don't like, don't really like my options too much for this turn. I guess I'll just play the Golo still. The Nissa is a killer. That's a good card. Yeah, outside the gaming sideboard. If you had to pick between buying a booster box of War of the Spark, Guilds, or Allegiance, which one would you pick? I would pick War of the Spark. I think War of the Spark has more cards that are going to hold their value over time, especially all the three mana planeswalkers. Now, Guilds and Allegiance does have the Shocklands, and I guess that's that's definitely good, having the Shocklands. That's a, that's a good card. Man, this Nissa giving them all this mana. That was good. Maybe I should have just grabbed... Honestly, honestly, I probably should just grab Meteor Golem, not Spyglass. Yeah, I should have just grabbed Meteor Golem. <laughs> yeah, and this is a good card. How good of how good of a draw would ritual set have been? Right here. Hmm. 
Karn, why can't you grab Ritual of Set? So I'm kind of assuming they're going to pick up Fey of Wishes, discard their Nissa in the land, use Fey of Wishes to go grab something that's going to destroy my Spyglass. I mean, they should have this one. That we're gonna have to. We're definitely gonna need to board in like Noctis Grass to deal with Nissa. I was feeling pretty good about this game until until Nissa. I feel like my opponent could have had a whole lot better turn. They would have just played plain white celebration and just proliferated four times and had both of those be seven sevens. I feel like that would have been better. Or do what I said of just discarding that land and the Nissa and pick the, up the Fey and go destroy my Spyglass. I feel like they could have had a lot better turn. Oh well, they're miles ahead and so they can have a poor turn and still be just fine. Don't think I can really get anything with this card right now. It's going to help me too much. Um... I mean, I guess I'll just do my best play. My best play is... It's not going to really help me in the long run, but... Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Let's go grab... Corridor Monitor. Recast a serpent or a Golos next turn. Uh, I, yeah, I think that keeping gold for Theros boosters is a good idea. We don't know anything about like we don't know like the whole all the cards in the set. So saying is the set is the set good or or not is just not even possible right now. We only know just a couple of cards. But it's Yeah, you can use basically you can use the gold for if you need boosters now, save them for boosters later. I mean, it's they're both good options. It, yeah, if you have basically everything you need in Eldrain, then definitely save the gold. I think the stomp animation is new. No, yeah, not, nothing's nothing's rotating out whenever Theros enters. We don't have another. There's only one rotation a year, and it's when the fall sets released. So, yes, the Ashiok that's in standard is still going to be legal with the new Ashiok from 
Theros beyond death. So yeah, you can have you'll you'll be able to have decks with both Ashoks if you want. Well, we're not beating mass manipulation. I can tell you that. We may be able to win on time with how slowly my opponent's playing. May be able to. I'm sure these are cards they're not used to playing against, though. So it's not... I mean, it makes sense. Uh, for us, we'd like to find Ugin. That would make my life a little easier. But maybe not. We're, we're going to have a good turn next turn. Oh, this is great. That is great. They just use use their mass manipulation up on just those two cards. That is very good. Okay, I need to play Tazerat. We good. We still have the mana to play this thing. They're playing Team or Adventure. Team or Adventures. Uh, let's get a Blast Zone. <laughs> Any Karns Bastion? Actually, I'm just going to grab Fable Passage. Give me a way to shuffle. Hmm. Yeah, they named Tezzeret with Spyglass. Yeah. New PCs running great. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I did bump up the FPS today. Yesterday I had it on 30 FPS. It's on 60 now. And I had 2,500 bitrate yesterday, and I have a 4,500 bitrate. I don't think we're dead. Uh, no, not no real plans on playing Jun Sacrifice in the near future. It's it's definitely the most yeah. It's definitely like the deck that I'm playing against just all the time. I don't usually like playing like even though I, there are days I play some tier one decks, but I don't usually like playing like the the very most popular deck. Yes, yeah, Storm. Oh, I guess we are dead.
Is the Bone Crusher Giant's gonna kill us? Okay. So I guess I, I could not have activated the Mystic Forge last turn. I should not have done that. I lost that one life that I could not lose. What are they doing? They did not kill me? They did not do they maybe guess they didn't have the red mana? Or they didn't tap very well, or I don't know. But we're not dead. That's good. Not being dead is good. One, two, three, four, five, six. I do not want a Mystic Forge. Shuffle. Okay. Stone Coral Serpent's cool. Um, I don't have the mana. Like, I can't play Ritual and activate Golos, unfortunately. I need, I need one more mana. But obviously we're playing Ritual. And now, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a free six, six. Do I want to make it any larger? No, we'll just make it six. Six sounds good. Okay. Not sure if I'm just supposed to play the Golos for zero there. Just play a new Golos and just ramp. Probably should. Yeah, I know they had no no red. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Storm. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, I I, I responded. Um, yeah, yet yesterday. Yesterday, there's somebody talking a lot about the the audio, how it could be improved. I, I couldn't quite figure it out today, and I'm going to keep keep trying to figure it out. But I I understand that the audio could be better. I just I haven't figured out exactly how to improve that yet. Free Ugin. That's six damage. But I was at seven. Good thing I didn't activate this Mystic Forge and lose one life. And fear are the seeds of disaster. Hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like we should not have won that game. I don't think we should have. How about that corridor monitor being a clutch sideboard card? I was I was really ready to just con concede, but I was like, oh well, I guess we'll just kind of play a little bit more. So we're gonna get these noxious grasps in here. Yeah, really glad they used the mass manipulation to only take an Emery and a Corridor Monitor. A 1-2 and a 1-4. But you can't, you can't manipulate, yeah, manipulation only takes creatures and planeswalkers. They can't take the Forge. Attack for a walk on the real 
single side. I'll just take out two steel over here for two noxious grasps. I wanted to take I like I thought about taking out another one for another ritual set. Maybe I should be doing that. Yeah, Shadow, if you if you see the yeah, it's they're the same quality. Um or or maybe better. I th I think the vid the uploads may be a little bit better quality than Twitch. I think. I'm not I'm not sure. But if you check out the videos from yesterday, you can see. Hmm. If they have Bone Crusher Giant, this is a pretty bad keep. If they don't, this could work out. Let's give it a try. I would not keep this on the play. If we were on the play, like if this was a game three hand, I'd be mulliganing. So ideally, we play the Steel Overseer first, um, and then the next turn we can play Stone Coral Serpent and put a counter on both. Ideally. I mean, best case scenario, honestly, is uh, we draw a blue source and play Serpent and Emery next turn. Oh, you're welcome, Shadow. And now I've taken more time than my opponent because I took some long turns there at the end. So they're probably thinking about what to do with Bone Crusher Giant if to, to use it right now on Overseer or if they should wait. Kind of what I'm thinking. I just want to be drawing land. A blue land would be nice. Oh, they just have fertile footsteps. Just the, the best possible start they can have. Lucky Clover and fertile footsteps. It must have just been AFK there. So just had Fertile Footsteps and Bone Crusher Giant. Just the dream. That's the, that is the dream. Mystic Forge. There you go. Hey, track team. Day's going great. Spent most of the day um, re retooling some decks and and uh, you know trying to put together a really nice lineup of decks for today. So hopefully y'all enjoy them. Starting, of course, with one of my favorite decks here. With Demir Affinity Forge. So Mystic Forge, playing Mystic Forge here to, like, if his spell, I could exile it and try to look for land to be able to play these things. Now, of course, we know... Yeah, so I'm going to exile. Since they're bouncing. Of course, we know they have the Disdainful Stroke to be able to recounter stuff.
It's crazy. They still have eight cards in hand. They've cast nine cards, and they still have eight cards in hand, and they've played nine cards. Lucky Clover Adventures is pretty broken, but we'll see how we'll see how it um, kind of ends up whenever Standard gets more powerful. It's it's obviously very very good right now with just the with the just the five sets in Standard, and it being the main part. But um, we'll see how it does. Like whenever Standard gets more powerful, and we start adding in more sets that. Presumably, none of them have more adventure stuff. drop that hurts really wanted to hit a land drop That was a that was a very poor turn for me. If I would have hit a land drop, I would have played the uh, Steel Overseer, but still, that was just a very poor turn for me. Overall, um, I really regret it. I think I think I should have just played like the Mystic Forge, uh, seeing if you know, play something to try to get the Disdainful Stroke out of their hand to try to get to these six mana walkers. Just kind of didn't do anything there. Yeah, and I, I can also Blast Zone, um, put Blast Zone on two, which would destroy the Clover and the Spyglass. While I had a very poor turn there, my opponent had a very poor turn as well, just playing Bone Crusher Giant and Spyglass and Return to Nature, the Mystic Forge. That doesn't sound like a poor turn, of course. That sounds like a great turn. But if they just played Chandra and held up Disdainful Stroke, I, I would have been more sad than the turn they actually had. Of course, the serpent being in the graveyard is kind of nice that we can just kind of re keep replaying it.
That was a good turn. I guess. I don't know. Kill the Chandra. They probably just have too many cards and too much mana, though. I should just sack the golden egg and gain three life. I kind of want to just blast zone and put the blast zone up to two. I don't know. This is this has just been kind of a difficult game. Why won't they play the growth spiral over here? There's there's nothing I don't really want to play a spyglass because I, I want to blast zone on two I think. think. I just don't have time. <laughs> yeah, they take a while. I mean, I'm at 13 minutes, so... So what are my options here? Serpent, Overseer, Forge. Those are my options. Like the most likely way that we win this is my opponent times out over three games. They have too much mana. They they should just be able to get mass manipulation and not mess it up this time. They had just a, a really, really strong hand this game. Well, they're going for the fling route. Or they're, I mean, they just get three cards off the, out of their sideboard, so they're probably just grabbing anything. One more chance. Well, that hurts. They have a removal spell for Emery. That hurts. That really hurts. Oh. Well, that's just lethal. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I, I never pulled up Deckmaster. I forgot to do that. Surprised nobody said anything about that. Sorry. <laughs> so much for our deck going fast and our, our first one taking... Our first match. Not taking very long. I just don't, I don't have anything great against Lucky Clover. I guess they haven't really had Edgewall Innkeeper. This could be a game where they have Edgewall Innkeeper. So I could play a Legion's End. That's kind of all it's doing. Let me just play this extra set. <clears throat> All right, hopefully Deckmaster's working again now. Now that I actually have it turned on. Yeah, it's possible they don't have Innkeeper. That seemed kind of silly for a one mana card that would draw a lot of cards. I don't really know why I'm fetching here. I probably shouldn't. It's probably not a good fetch. So this isn't a good play against Bone Crusher Giant. But it's a good play to help turn on Emery. Barber is not so bad. Yeah, the reason why that yeah, good question. The reason why that wasn't a good fetch is because I wanted to draw a land there that turn two, but it it did turn on me playing the Stone Cold Server. It it worked out perfectly, but considering I really wanted to draw land, it wasn't a very good at fetch. Oh, I should have turned this into a three three. I forgot to do that, but now I'm not going to. Should have attacked for another three. No, not mill over all these lands. I need to draw land. Hmm. There 
is great power in the feet you make. <laughs> there's just not there's just not really combo decks around for more deco. It's not too necessary. That garden. I am not frightened by you. <laughs> Gotta try to make their spells cost more. Well, that was a good turn. I guess we do the whole affinity thing. All right, I think we'll have lethal here. Y'all ready for a good turn? Here we go. So Tezzeret, and now we get free stuff. Well, we got free stuff before with Ukin, but we get even more free stuff. Free stuff, free stuff, uh, free. Doesn't really matter. Um, here, you can be a 2-2. Because you you're free. Our the I will not lose what else do we want to get that's free? Meteor Golem? Are you free yet? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, you are. Meteor Golem free. Kill that thing. Recast this. Let's make a 9-9. Nine nine. Uh, we'll make another 2-2. Two two. And zap. Ugh, put him down to one. So close. All right, the egg finishes him out. Boom! Free stuff! Free stuff. So only our creatures and our planeswalkers had affinity, not not normal artifacts, so statue didn't have affinity. Statue just cost two less because of Ugin. But our creatures and our planeswalkers are free. Well, they they all had affinity. <laughs> that was a pretty good turn, right? Yeah, that was that turn was okay. That turn was okay. Could have been better. <laughs> Only Tezzeret's zap was lethal, not the golden egg. So what is affinity? Affinity means that our it it means that the spell costs any spell with affinity costs one generic less to cast for each artifact you control. So for each artifact we controlled, our creatures and our planeswalkers, because the creatures and planeswalkers had affinity, so they each cost one less to cast for those. <laughs> that was your first time seeing a non-lagging zap. <laughs> Finally.
Tranquil Cove. I don't think Ritual Set's going to be too good against Tranquil Cove. Get him Serpent. What are they going to do? Teferi bounce you? I don't think so. Protection from Teferi. Alright, I got double Mystic Forge. Uh, I guess we'll save that. Mystic Forge is more valuable than Karn, but I have two Mystic Forges. So I'll go Forge first, Karn second, Forge third. Okay, well. I guess I don't need to fetch right now. So let's play this first. Oh, that's a great mill over. What? Why am I? I should be attacking there. I don't care about protect. Like, per, I'm not blocking for. <laughs> Mystic Forge isn't a planeswalker I need to block for. I uh, got in, instincts there. <laughs> Still, I'll take that so they don't get to tap my stuff during my upkeep. And they don't get to time wipe, put it back in their hand, or to fairy bounce their own Gadwick. That's unfortunate. All right, I don't really want to draw a Steel Overseer. Sorry, Steel Overseer. Stand down. I just want to get the bullet citadel in my hand in case of another planar cleansing. So it's either grab Fable Passage, which shuffles, or grab Cryptic Caves, which can draw an extra card. I think right now I'm going to grab the Fable Passage to shuffle. Huh. Talk about a card I was not expecting whatsoever. It's a good card. Yeah, played into that. That was a great card. That was a great card.
So my opponent, my opponent's probably, you know, respecting the Citadel. Because they, if they countered Emery, then I could have gone land Citadel. Like, maybe if they just have one counter spell. That's a little unlikely, but... Yeah, Ritual Set would kill this thing. Yeah, this is this has CMC zero. It's just a token. That's a lot of cards over there. Boo. Could have been better. Could have been better. So no Ugans in here, one Tezzeret. I think they got this. I got really destroyed by the commence the end game. That was just not a card I expected or played around or anything like that. That being said, I, I don't really don't really like our chances here post board either. Too much. Planar cleansing is a devastating card for me, of course. Emery looked really bad there. This is not a good Emery matchup because basically this matchup, we need all of the cards in our deck and Emery just milling over 12 cards like it did. That's not really something I can afford. Um, the problem is, is if I take out Emery and I take out Ritual of Soot, I honestly don't have enough. I'm not playing Duress's Spyglass's Counter Magic, that kind of stuff. And maybe I should be. Maybe I have too much anti-creature stuff here in the sideboard. Maybe like a couple of these, like these Legion Tens could be something else. Like maybe I need more anti-control. Because obviously I have, I have cards here. Like these are, these are just fine. 
but then I don't have things for Karn to grab. Yeah, yep, I agree. The, the planar cleansing, that's a tough one. I, I don't know if Theros will bring stuff to improve Mono Black Discard. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just it's just really too hard to say right now what's because it's not that it's not necessarily like even if there are cards that help Mono Black Discard improve, it's just what happens to the rest of the metagame. Like what what kind of cards, what kind of decks do people start playing because of what's in Theros and everything? It's you know, it'd all just be a complete guess. I, I don't know. So I don't really want to play any of these other cards. We've got to play two. Gosh, I really don't play these things. I guess I'm just not going to have anything in my deck for Karn to really grab, or anything in my sideboard. This also isn't great for Steel Overseer with just Brazen Bar we're bouncing in. want to play Mystic Forge this this last turn. Let's try this. Yeah, I like Elspeth and Ashiok. I like yeah, I like the card design of both of those cards. Looks like I would need another, like, four cards in my sideboard for this matchup, honestly. I have four cards in my deck that I don't really want in my deck. I could... I could use more than that, but I would need at least four. I'm surprised Mystic Ford resolved, honestly. <laughs> Thanks, D1. Here goes nothing. I haven't seen the Daxos card yet. That must have just been previewed while I was stream while I started streaming. Thank you. 
They have more planar cleansing. That's going to be really bad for us. Hopefully not. I think I just kind of go for them hopefully not having another planar cleansing. I want to hit the land drop off the top, so that means that we are paying the two life here instead of casting it for free, which we could. Because, yeah, now we get the land drop. All right, now we're going to play this. Ramp. I wonder how this works. Wait, what? That wasn't correct. Until you have lived as a statue, do not fall. My purpose is greater than myself. Oh, come on. Whoops. Abandon all hope. Um, any keywords? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of keywords. Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger is in here? Why is that in here? Yeah, I need, I need another turn with them not having that. I was going to be able to get another 10 life there. Secrets manifest before you. 
Yeah, I don't know why Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger was in here. That's something to name. That that card's not on Arena. I thought you could only name cards on Arena. Ooh, are they printing Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger for Historic? Is that what that means? Ooh, we... Uh... Oh, is it? It's an arena for Mo, for Momir. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it was on Mo, in Momir. So they have double absorb. They have a brazen borrower chilling over there. Truth lies beyond vision. Go get a mobilized district. Get him. I think we got a... <laughs> yeah, Ulamog's in Theros. There you go. Conspiracy theory. Ulamog's now in Theros. We get that conspiracy theory going on. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So if I activate castle, I won't really be able to do very much besides just meteor golem. I think I just draw. Dang, that's a lot of lands in a row. <clears throat> the fabric of the multiverse. Why would you tap my mobilized district? Get out of here with that. Tap these things. They don't do anything. Stop. I don't like that.
It's like these Fable Passages aren't even really that good because I know I just have like these two lands down at the bottom. I don't really want to shuffle them up. I can gain three life with the golden eggs, so we're not just dead to the Castle Ardenvale. They got me though. And planar cleansing is really difficult for me to beat. Especially two planar cleansings. It's the whole point of my deck is just to throw a whole bunch of stuff in play. So I gotta hope they don't have another counter spell. So yeah, after after like a 16, 17 minute first match, and I was like, oh, maybe this won't take so long. We're at an hour 41 minutes now, and we've played three matches. <laughs> we didn't even win a game that time. That was just a 2-0 win. Standard so slow. This is why I, I can't. I would love to play four. I'd love to play five matches a deck. That's what I like doing. I think that's a, a better showing than four matches a deck, but we're about to be we're about to be two hours in pretty soon. The new rig, it's very good. Yeah, very, very pleased. Huh. Yeah, there's this Healy and Steel Overseer in this deck. Yeah, I think, yeah, Gadwick's the best top end card in Azorius. Yeah, Gadwick's amazing.
I mean, AJ, it's, it's a time thing. I would, I would like to play five, but it's a, it's a time thing. Time, time consideration. If, if we play five, we're not going to have time for other decks. So I, I'm not going to block there with the Stone Coral Serpent because I can just block the next turn and it's just the same thing whether I block this this turn or the next turn. This turn I could protect Karn. Really? Uh, that's annoying. This looks over. <laughs> yeah, Spyglass doesn't do anything on this battlefield. There's nothing to Spyglass. Drew very, very well, but that's what the Great Henge does for you. The next turn, we're going to have a pretty... We're going to have an okay turn, at least. We're going to be able to play Ugin and play some other stuff and play a big Stone Coral Serpent. Sorry. We're going to be able to use Ugin to destroy something. We're going to at least do stuff the next turn. The Emery dying, them having the removal spell for Emery hurt too, after discarding the other removal spell. Hmm. It's all about if we can survive. Vivian definitely makes it harder to survive, given trample and being removal. But especially the trample. Alright, Ritual of Soot's one of our better cards. We'll keep this even though it's just a two lander because of Ritual of Soot. Hoping Golden Egg helps us hit those couple more land drops. Do we want to draw land? That's not land. Do we want to draw land? Okay, there's one.
If I had an, if I had a sec another land in hand and I knew for sure I was playing Ritualist at the next turn, I would not play Steel Overseer. Unfortunately, we just don't know for sure that I'm playing it. Really hope I'm playing it though. Uh, could not draw the land. I didn't activate Fable Passage, of course, because that takes a land out of the deck. And if we draw a land, then we have four and we can activate and we don't get a tap land. Okay, we're, we're still in it. Game's not over, at least. So Serpent can... can block a questing beast. You know, we can't make a 4-4 Serpent. I, of course, would have preferred them to have, like, Rotting Regisaur this last turn, not Questing Beast, you know, another creature that died to Soot. Of course. Hmm. Looks like they're just sitting on removal, though. So if, if I just play Stone Coil Serpent, we're going to have our Serpent get killed. But I don't have a better play, so let's play. Whoa, no removal. Not just murder. I thought Murderous Rider for sure. Maybe they have more beasts. Yep. So Myst playing Mystic Forge here means that we get to kind of try to help hit our, our six land drop. Because if this was a spell, we could exile it um, by paying one life. It is a land. Unfortunately, it's the shock land. But for the two life that we pay for the Watery Grave, we get to gain it back with the Ugin. Um, I mean, all, all of these Planeswalkers are win cons. All these creatures are win, win cons. As far as, like, what's our win con? We have every... Creatures, basically any creature and Planeswalker in a deck is a win con. That's pretty good. Was that a good turn?
god, interloper. Hmm. Yeah, another questing beast would kill us. We're hanging on by a thread here. I guess that they have just nothing else. They have no more creatures. And we ritual have set away these two. These three. Why would they shock there? Oh, Brontodon? So they have no more creatures. Nope. Great hand just too difficult to beat. It's too good. All right, so we ended up going two and two. Um, we did see that we struggled against uh, some artifacts that our opponents were playing, whether it was like Lucky Clover, Great Henge, Spyglass. Those things were kind of problematic. Um, there was, of course, a lot more artifact removal from opponents. We we knew that with this metagame. Um, I did like I liked the interplanar beacons a lot. I think I would add in another interplanar beacon, and honestly, probably just get rid of Sahili. I think because I do think that our deck probably needs one more land, even with our other ways to hit land drops. I think we need one more land. And it would be really nice to have some kind of big effect because, you know, our opponents had, like, planar cleansing was just completely devastating, but then the same with, like, mass manipulation. Which casualties of war there is really rough. So, like, our opponents are playing some just really big, devastating effects, or they're drawing millions of cards with, like, Gadwick. We don't have, like, a anything like that, in, unless we can get Mystic Forge Ugin rolling. We saw some really cool turns with Mystic Forge Ugin. That's that's what our deck's all about. Um, but yeah, that's so that's Demir Affinity Forge. Um, yeah, basically just kind of try to avoid planar cleansing, and your opponent. Drawing millions of cards with the Great Henge. Try, try to, <laughs> try to avoid those two things. Um, those are really, those are the things that that really defeated us. Planar cleansing. I, I don't know. I mean, we could have on Mordigo in the sideboard for planar cleansing. I guess. Uh, um, just talk about how maybe we have too much stuff against like the creatures here, like the two legions and two noxious grasp. Sorcerer Spyglass wasn't spectacular. It probably doesn't need to be a three of. I don't know. I guess we didn't really face the Jund sacrifice decks too much, though. But you can maybe trim a, a Spyglass and maybe trim some of these four slots and have some discard and counter magic for the control decks. That would probably be useful. Maybe something like... Maybe just playing, like, Tuna Gates... Maybe get rid of the third Spyglass and a Legion's End and grab two Negates. Yeah, because I think you want the Noxious Grafts against the Nissa decks. So yeah, prob probably that. And then you get a couple of Negates for the Planar Cleansing decks. 
There we go. That's Demir Affinity Forge. We need to get moving on to our other decks. Always a fun one to play. I really like playing this deck. It's is it the it's not the best in the format, of course, but it's definitely a fun one to play. So I always like it. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it also. Hope you hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, feel free to leave comments if you're playing the deck also. Let me know how it's going for you over there. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.